So last night a game released that I've been waiting for for a very long time, which is Dragon's Dogma 2. It's a game that I've been super excited for and couldn't wait for it to come out. And then once it came out, uh, well, I don't even know how I got surprised at this, but it released <laughs> to mostly negative reviews. Another AAA game on PC that has negative reviews. Color me surprised. It, it, this trend never it never ceases to amaze me and it always happens every single time a triple a game comes out at this point it seems like it's always double a and indie games that actually release in some way a polished state and that wow i guess it's because they actually give a shit about the actual consumer that wants to buy their games whereas these triple a's look at it as all oh, well you buy our game now and maybe we'll fix it later, but you gotta give us money first. And that is the, it's so scummy to me. It is absolutely scummy. Now, of course, I don't like to just believe everything I see on the internet. Sure, there's a lot of mostly negative reviews and sure, there's a lot of complaints here and there, but I wanted to see for myself. And to be quite honest, the performance is dog shit. I'm not gonna lie, the performance is trash. It, I'll put gameplay on while I'm talking about this, but it's, it, it's not that good. I have a RTX 4080, and I have a, a Ryzen 5800X. It's not exactly the top of the top of the line CPU, but it shouldn't be giving me the issues I have, especially when I got to the capital in the game, which is where the whole performance just nosedive. It just went straight down the hell, which again, it shouldn't happen. But let me show you what some of the Steam reviews are first. Let me educate you on the lore and where a lot of the issues stem from, because it's not just performance issues that this game has. It's the fact that first of all, it's 70 bucks, and then what they add on top of it. So at the time of me making this video, now the reviews have gotten to mixed because I guess more people are getting it and a lot of people are just like, eh, so whatever, or they see it's their favorite game and they're like, who cares, man? It's a fun game. And I mean, sure, there are people like that, but at the same time, I think that you should never excuse any problems, especially a game that right here, 70 fucking bucks which once you add taxes it leads up to 75 plus bucks in us dollars D again it's fucking garbage so then they have right here buy dragon's dogma 2 a boon for adventurers new journey pack you can buy this uh bundle for 15 bucks wow you get the music and sounds collection some wave files you get some uh explorer camping kit camping gear What's that? A thoughtful gift. You get pendants, a makeshift goal key, a bunch of useless shit that you'll get in the game no matter what. Anyway, it, it, it's no point. And then look at all the microtransaction DLC for this fucking game, man. This is where it's so fucking trash. You got some of this other shit that's part of the, the beginner's bundle or the, the boon for adventurers, a new journey pack. And then you got a bunch of other things. But the things that were highlighted that a lot of people had issues with, which is the Art of Metamorphous character editor. Now, if you don't know what that is, it, it literally what it is, character editor. When you make your character... Now, oh, that, that's another issue with this game. When you, cr when you create your save file, you start your game, you can't start over. You are literally stuck in the fucking game in the sense of you cannot make a new save. You can't go back and make a new character. You can't do any of that. Future Wasabi here. I looked into this a little bit more because I was actually pretty curious about this. So from what I've seen on a post from the main subreddit, it says once you're at a first big city following the main story pretty early, you head to the marketplace. There is like a huge rift stone inside open building. So next to it, you <clears throat> at a pond at a small table selling a book for 500 rift points. It says that you can earn in game. It'll let you edit your arisen and pawn once, and then you can rebuy again if needed. And then I looked into that a little bit more, and apparently you can get two at, at the moment. You can only buy two max, and then no one knows if it's going to respawn or restock every week or what the case is with that. But I just wanted to include that in because I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to work for this game. But that's how it is. To me, it still doesn't really excuse the fact that there is microtransactions present for this. I know a lot of people are saying, hey, you can still get in early game and still buy this and do that, but it doesn't excuse the fact that that shit still exists anyway. But for a lot of people, once you do New Game Plus, you're probably not going to want to play it again anyway, unless you're a hardcore Dragon's Dogma fan. So that's really redundant and fucking stupid in its own right that you can't just change your character when you want to. I think that's an absolutely baffling decision in my personal opinion. But the biggest issue with this is when you go to the character editor, this is a one-time use. It'll tell you right here, obtain an item that allows the Arisen to edit their appearance or the appearance of a pawn. It can only be used once when visiting a Barbary. So you pay two bucks to use an item fucking once, man. It's fucking scummy. It's fucking greedy. It wouldn't, I wouldn't really care if this was something that you could use all the time. Like, hey, you know what? Oh, where in the fuck is this audio come from? <laughs> Hold the I just heard some random audio play. Oh, that's from the fucking Steam page. I was like, I started losing my sour people talking. I was like, oh my lord. Um, but yes, if if 
if this was an item that you could sit there and use <laughs> for uh, anytime you want to air, edit your character's appearance instead of like a only one situation or not having to wait for a new game plus, that would be fine. But this isn't the case. Realistically, is any of this shit worth any of the money? No. And the reason why a lot of people have issue with this is because, don't get me wrong, I know there's going to be people like, oh, well, you don't have to pay for it, bro. It doesn't affect the in-game experience. You can still get all the items. Why well, it shouldn't be in this game to begin with. It's 70 fucking bucks. They, like, that's the crazy part. This is 70 fucking dollars. Why is microtransactions in a single player game? It has no right. It has no purpose. And sure, the argument can be made. Oh, well, it's in other Capcom games. Oh, who gives a shit? Just because it's in other games doesn't make it right. Doesn't mean that it's good. It shouldn't be in any of their games. It's single fucking player. And so then when you go to some of the reviews and say, character stuck in floor, can't reload as his autosave, can't delete character and make a new one. And then this is someone showing how to actually delete the save so that you can start over for someone who's actually having this issue. Another one was putting together a compatibility guide for playing the game under Linux and Steam Deck, which required me to use various Proton versions. Apparently each of these counted as an individual PC and triggered the Denuvo tamper protection. Now I can't play it. Uh, at all on any of my systems for the crime of trying to help more users enjoy the game. For those that don't know what the Nouveau is, it's a DR, it's a digital rights management system, or I'm pr pretty sure I did that right. If, I, if it's not, I'll put a correction. But what it is, is essentially, it's like, it's pretty much to try and stop uh, piracy. That's literally what the tool is. They're like, hey, you put the Nouveau on your game, people can't pirate your game no more, and then all the only people that get hurt are the consumers. And that's literally what happens right here. When you get something like the Nouveau, it has activation periods. You can only activate uh, You can only activate it on so many computers at a time. It's, it's literally garbage. It's one of the worst pieces of software ever. And anyone who PC games hates the fuck out of the Nouveau. And then you get some shit like this. Hey, Capcom, you can purchase a good review DLC for $1.99. And then it's just a lot of other people that are talking about their experience so far with the game. If it's good, if it's bad, then you start having a lot of people that are saying the game is good or it's just a lot of joke reviews. And so, you know, it just varies. But it, so, again, one of the biggest issues is just the, the proceeding. It's literally the proceeding. That's the only reason why it's so fucking upsetting. To sit there and have shit like this, it's just so wild. And you can sit there and make all the copium responses that you want. Oh, you don't have to do it. You don't have to buy it. But it shouldn't be there to begin with. Like, it's still worth criticizing. Instead of just saying, oh, well, hey, you know what? This is fine. Add some more shit for the next game. And the next game, and the next game. If people don't say anything, then it just tells companies that this is okay. Whereas if they at least get some type of backlash and, and something to some extent, then people are at least going to be a little bit more weary. And then the company's going to be like, oh, shit, all right, maybe we just pull back some of the microtransactions for the next game or whatever the case might be. Again, it's highly unlikely, but it's better than nothing. Also, one more thing that I just wanted to add in real quick that I think is really fucking annoying about this game is you only have literally one save slot. This is, it makes no sense that these games do this, that they give you limited save slots, especially on PC, where you can, you have so much fucking space, man. What is there fucking a limit for? Why is it that I can't make multiple save points for when I want to come back to whatever case of, Maybe I want to try this out before I do this. Maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to do that. And I get the idea. Some people are like, oh, well, they want to punish you for your actions. You know, you better be careful what you do in the game. I don't give a shit. It's a fucking game. Let me do it as I please. Why am I so limited? Or just give me three slots max so that I can pick and choose where I want to go. It is so fucking weird that it literally just limits you to one fucking save slot on top of the fact that you can't even start a new game if you wanted to. It's, I, I, I don't know, man. It just leaves me speechless. And so following the release, Capcom made their own statement to the surprise of nobody. They said to all Dragon Dogs Month 2 players, we would like to update you on the status of the following items in which we have received numerous comments from the community. To all those looking forward to the game, we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience. Now, I'm going to just say this here real quick. If you really uh, do apologize, then why did you release the game in a state like this? Because... Again, to the surprise of nobody, it had to be play tested. People had to play this and there's no way in hell that they didn't see these issues, but they still decided to release it anyway. And again, for 70 bucks. So crashing the bug fixes, they said they're, that's their highest priority. They're working on trying to get that fixed. Then they said the option to start in a new game, which I mentioned earlier, <laughs> we are looking at adding a feature to the Steam version of the game that will allow players that are already playing to restart the game. We will announce more details as soon as we can. Again, it makes no sense. How the fuck do you create a game and then you're like, nah, we don't want the player starting over. Ah, that no, no. I feel like this is almost made in a way for the situ or in the chance of we have a thing set in stone where people have to buy a thing to change their character, and if people uh, have an option to restart the game early on, they because they don't like their character's appearance, then they'll go that route instead of buying uh, this microtransaction. Now, you know, maybe this is a tinfoil hat theory. Maybe I'm just conspiracy theories here, but that 
seems like a logical thought if I'm being honest. They were like, hey, no new game, so you can't keep restarting your character over and keep making new appearances. And guess what? Now, if you want to change it, you're going to need to buy this item if you want to do it immediately, or you're going to have to play the fuck out of this game first to get any options to change your character's appearance. That's what it screams to me. Could be wrong, but that's just what I was thinking. And then right here, they clarify and say, hey, these are all items you can get in game. You don't have to actually purchase these microtransactions. They just exist, which again, the point is not really because of the price or the fact that they uh, are that they're items from in game, but the fact that this even exists to begin with and on a single player game and on a $70 game. This has no place being in this game at all. No matter how easy it might be to obtain these said items, it makes no sense. And if you're buying these items, why? As Mudohar said in his video, dog, you're playing the fucking game. Just play it. Just fucking play it. You'll get all this shit eventually. What are you, what are you in a rush for? <laughs> it makes no sense. Like the character creator, I can understand that to some extent. If you're really upset with how your character looks mid game, you're not gonna be able to change their appearance for at least another 20 or 30 hours. Sure, that makes sense. But most of all this other shit, dog, what are you in a rush for? Just play the fucking game. It's not that serious. And then they said regarding frame rate, which is an issue I've had as well, too. It says a large amount of CPU usage is allocated to each character and calculating the impact of their physical pre uh, presence in various areas. And certain, uh, 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 fuck, I can't talk today. In certain situations where numerous characters appear simultaneously, the CPU usage can vary and may affect the frame rate. We are aware that in such situations, settings that reduce CPU uh, GPU load may currently have a limited effect. However, we are looking at ways to improve the performance in the future. Again, th this performance problem is not a surprise to nobody. They've had to clearly see it when they did beta and uh, final build test and play in the game to make sure it was good to ship out. And then they were just like, yeah, that's fine. We'll just ship it out anyway. Who, who gives a shit? Players, uh, th th as long as we get their money, that's fine. We can promise to patch it down the line. And whether or not fixes their issue, who gives a shit? We got their money, right? And that is the mentality of all these fucking game companies. Anyways, I just want to talk about this real quick because I bought the game today. I've been enjoying it, but it has performance issues and it's really fucking annoying. And then just on top of all the other issues, it's just really disappointing to see this from a game that I've been looking forward to and a game that I do thoroughly actually, I have, I have, I'm having a fun time with it. Like I literally have fun with it, but these are really big blemishes on what could be a really great game. Anyways, you made this far into the video, consider giving a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me comment below what you think. Have a great day. Yeah.